Welcome everyone to Bonifab Custom. My name is Rob Bonifacio and I'm going to be showing you how to mandrel bend and how I adapted a machine that wasn't a mandrel bender to mandrel bend. First, what is mandrel bending? Well, basically, if we want to make pipe with perfect bends, um, depending on the pipe we use, um, we need to support it somehow on its way to being bent. And um, in this case, a mandrel is put inside the pipe and is stationary. And as it starts to bend, that mandrel gives support to the inside of the pipe. Now, here I have this bender, a curvatubi bender. And originally, it's actually not a mandrel bender, but I adapted this to work um, as a mandrel bender and it works perfectly. And I'm going to show you uh, what I had to change on there uh, to make this a mandrel bender and how it works and what parts um, actually are uh, used to mandrel bend pipe. Now, not all pipe can be mandrel bent. The, this pipe here is a, an aluminum pipe, but it is a T4, so it's not a hardened aluminum. Hardened aluminum will just crack. Um, this here is a bigger pipe, and this also is a T4 or a T5, and it also can be bent. Now, this is a thin wall, two and a half inch diameter tube, and I'm gonna be showing you how um, this can be bent on this mandrel bender and how it works. The basics of it is that we need to support this pipe because on its way to being bent, it is squashing this part here, the inside where the die is, and on the outside, it is stretching. Now, if we don't support that everywhere on its journey to being bent, it will kink. That material wants to come out somewhere. So we need to support it on the inside, which we have our die and we have our sweeper and the outside as it's being bent, which is gonna be on a follow die on the outside and then on the inside, there's all this support we have to put, and that's where our mandrel is gonna be. Let's take a closer look at the parts. Okay, so let's look at the parts of um, the mandrel or the mandrel bender. So we have our main die. So this is gonna be a two and a half inch diameter die. And on the inside, we have this really important part and this is called the sweeper and this can move in and out but it's supported back here and what it's doing is it's supporting that inside of the pipe as it's being bent so the kink doesn't pull or the kink doesn't come behind the actual bend so we're kind of forcing it forward then we have our part here that holds the front of the die. So this is very important. It's like a cam action and it puts a lot of pressure on that front as it's pulling the pipe through the die or pulling it around the die. On this side here, this part is actually going to uh, go in and out and put pressure on the outside of the pipe as it's bent. And then we have our mandrel here, which is probably the most important part. And this mandrel I made, and it's just made with uh, basically Delrin uh, or acetyl pucks. And inside here, I have a chain so it can rotate as it's being bent around. And then all these pucks are supporting the diameter on the inside. And this uh, mandrel can go in and out via a ram on the other side I put. And I made this framework here and it's pretty hacked, but um, actually this bender has made thousands upon thousands of bends for me. Um, very good mandrel bends. Okay, so I'm gonna put a pipe in there, uh, program a 90 degree angle, 
and I'll show you how it's actually uh, put together and how it bends a pipe. All right, so I have my piece of two and a half inch diameter pipe and it's a one eighth wall. And the first thing I want to do on my mandrel bender is I want to bring the mandrel, basically this part here, the straight part that doesn't bend to the base, to the tangent of the diameter of this uh, die. So I'm going to hydraulically move that forward. So I'm going to turn on my hydraulics. And I'm going to bring that forward. Now I already have this set up. I'm going to take off my my pipe clamp here. Now I'm at the right position that I can put my pipe in. Now this mandrel only turns a certain direction. So it only moves left to right and we have to make sure we're in the right position because if it wasn't in the right position, it could break the mandrel. Now, a lot of professional machines have a different setup here and they can move either way um, up and down. They can move as the, as the pipe bends. So now that I have that in there, I can oil my mandrel, oil my sweeper here, and then place my pipe in. Now we're oiling it because there is a lot of pressure that goes on inside and the pipe, because of its, its aluminum pipe, and that's the main reason I used the uh, Seidel or the Delrin type pucks on the inside because steel pipes, uh, pucks or brass pup pucks will bind with the aluminum. So now I'm going to put this into my pipe, put the mandrel in there, bring it all the way in. And I'm going to place it there. I'm going to put my clamp on. Now, a lot of mandrels, at, not mandrels, but the clamps, sometimes have a hard time pulling that pipe, especially the bigger diameter. You, you don't want it to slip as it's pulling around. So uh, what I've done is use a, a piece of drywall sandpaper, which works great because it grips on both sides. So it'll grip on the pipe and grip on the clamp. And I just place it inside the clamp there. Because we have that mandrel inside, it needs that extra force to pull it through that because it's forming the pipe. Okay, got that clamped in there. Now I want to support the pipe on the outside as it's bending. So I have this follow die right here. And it's basically long because it stays or it moves with the die going around as it's getting pulled through. So I'll put this in here. Make that, make sure that's supported. I'll clamp that down really tightly. Again, we're forming, we're stretching. So everything on here has to be super tight to force that material to stretch and bend around if we don't have that support, we're going to get that kinking on the inside. So that's tight. And I like to 
oil the outside of my pipe as it's going through the sweeper and I'll put some oil on the follow die here also. Now that I have that ready, um, I'm ready to bend that uh, aluminum pipe. Okay, so now it's bent. I'm gonna relieve the pressure from the bend, just like that. I'm gonna pull the mandrel out of the part first because that mandrel pulling out will just form that little bit more as it's pulling out. Now I can release the follow die. I can take that right out. Release the clamp. And take out my pipe. And you can see no kinks inside, a really nice bend. Nicely bent on the outside also. You can see that stretching. You know, for this kind of pipe, if we think about it, it is stretching that material probably three, four inches on one side and squashing it down on the other side. If we were to cut this in half, you can actually see that the center line here is actually thinner or the material is actually thinner, the wall thickness, than the inside. So that's how I mandrel bend, basically not on a mandrel bender, but on a modified bender. And I've bent, um, I've modified other benders to work the same way. As long as we have that mandrel inside supporting the inside, and for larger diameter pipe, you need that sweeper and that follow die. Um, on smaller pipe, you just need the actual mandrel inside, and it works out really well. And you can use this type of pipe for doing many different kinds of projects, uh, maybe roll cages, things like that. It's just a nicer bend, and, and because it doesn't have those kinks, it is a stronger bend also. Thanks for watching Bonifab Custom. I hope you learned something from this uh, uh, little demonstration of mandrel bending, and uh, thanks for all your support. Don't forget to subscribe for more fabrication and forging videos.